Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist, Dr. Jackson Crawford. Old Norse Specialist, you might say. That sounds like a heck of a pseudo career for a loser. And uh, that's the long and the short of what I want to talk about today. So the reason I'm making this video is that it's a pretty common genre of question that I get asked either by people who are contemplating going into grad school to study some humanities or liberal arts field, whether that's as uh, obviously unremunerative as Old Norse or maybe a little bit less obviously unremunerative like English or history perhaps. Um, or I get asked by people who are sort of already there and are looking for some kind of career guidance uh, once they're out of grad school. And to some extent, the response to those two different crowds is different, but a lot of the response is the same. So I have an old video called Going to Grad School that you can look at that still has, I think, pretty valid advice for people who have made a goal of going to grad school and uh, are pretty sure they want to do that. Uh, most of that is just reminding you that uh, the personality type that succeeds in grad school is not necessarily the type that wants to go. So my tripod is getting weirdly unstable here. Uh, I am not necessarily the personality type that succeeds in grad school, right? Some of us want to be um, students and teachers forever. You know, we're very curious in a kind of, uh, I'll say gentle way, and I'll come back to what I mean by that in a, in a moment. Um, and we enjoy being able to explain things to other people. And uh, bizarrely enough, while that sounds like someone who would really succeed in grad school, isn't necessarily. I find that the personality type that really succeeds in grad school tends to be very obsessive about very narrow particular topics uh, because that's what motivates a really grinding uh, research agenda, which is what gets you money and uh, promotions and tenure track jobs typically. I think also the people who are a little bit more successful while being obsessive about those topics are probably a little bit more socially capable than the uh, uh, perpetual student teacher types uh, like myself. I think that they, they tend to be a little bit better able to schmooze and uh, also maybe to tell where the uh, tides are, are turning, you know, kind of get out ahead of trends that are going to be popular um, in the next five or ten years. I think that the problem that the sort of student teacher type like myself gets into, you know, we're the people who were, you know, good students, at least after high school, um, always learned well, we're always uh, looked upon pretty favorably by teachers, we're the types who can explain stuff to people pretty well. Um, I think the problem that we get into is that there is an end to the student phase, right, at which point in grad school, you've got to write your dissertation and, and really do that hardcore research agenda, which some of us successfully adapt to do. I, you know, I successfully wrote a dissertation that I think is, is good. In fact, I think one of the better dissertations I've read. And, um, the fact that I don't particularly like to brag on myself tells you that I'm setting a bar there that's surprisingly low. Um, and I think that then we wind up competing for these teaching jobs, note, not the same thing as professor jobs because professorial jobs, the actual tenure track things, associate assistant, full professor, those promotions are mostly based on research. We teaching types who don't maybe produce a paper a month uh, but enjoy the classroom are mostly going to be hired to teach very large classes in jobs that last maybe a year 
if you're lucky, maybe two or three years, and then you're moving somewhere else if you're lucky enough to get another one of those jobs. And the pay is absolutely atrocious. And once you are pigeonholed in academic society as one of these, uh, you know, adjuncts or instructors or lecturers, different universities call them different things, sometimes with different shades of meaning between those, um, you're pigeonholed. And the people who were lucky enough or had the right set of luck plus, plus skills to get those uh, tenure track positions sort of look at you as someone who belongs in, you know, the adjunct track. Um, as I said, the pay there is atrocious. You know, I've recently gone through a uh, family and financial crisis. I will not elaborate on too much because I think it would sound like I was trying to speak ill of, of someone or some ones that I, I really don't mean to speak ill of. Um, and during this period, I've had to think quite a bit about, well, you know, what am I, what am I doing? Is this a, is this YouTube and, and, and books thing uh, really going to work out? Is this something I can keep doing for 10, 20 years, right? You know, and, and make a living off of. And my brother asked me, well, do you ever think about going back and teaching? And I said, Travis, uh, yes, I do think about it. I miss the classroom, right? I miss actually the experience of being able to see the people I was talking to, to kind of, uh, you know, guide their studies and uh, respond to their interests in a way that you really can't with online interactions. Um, I said, well, um, I think my best paying job in academia was the University of Colorado, where I made 2300 a month, I think, most months. Um, that was as head of Nordic studies. No, not a tenure track position because there's no tenure track positions in Nordic studies. Um, rent in Denver or Boulder runs, you know, not much south of that. And, um, you know, well, that's assuming that I were teaching in Colorado. I think by now I'm pigeonholed as something worse than an adjunct. I'm pigeonholed as a, you know, rogue academic, ex-academic, somebody who left uh, the life, even though from my perspective, I just continued educating just in a different place. Um, so it's not very likely that I could get hired at a university now. Pay would be bad. I'd probably have to go somewhere else. And, you know, I have high aspirations. Let me gather my thoughts for a moment and give you a quick word from my friends and partners at Grimfrog. Hard melt him in molded Hot mir skilled a cow So what are these academic jobs like, really, right? Um, I mentioned that they don't last very long and they don't pay very well. They're also ripe for abuse. I have known many a woman in fields like this, in job tracks like this, who has dealt with abuse from um, male professors or, or other people in the academic system uh, higher placed. It's not just women who deal with that kind of abuse though. I was harassed uh, constantly during my time at UCLA by the person, the tenured professor whose job I was doing. Um, tenure in the UC system makes you pretty much immortal unless you kill somebody. Um, so this individual hadn't taught for years. I was teaching the classes assigned to this person, uh, making I think a fifth as much as this person did. And this person would regularly try to intimidate me and bully me into doing things for this person, you know, writing things to be published under this person's name, etc. You know, this person would follow me into bathrooms, lock me into my own office, uh, physically threaten me, um, quite possibly actually visited my apartment to knock on the door at midnight. I never actually discovered that it was definitely this person, but uh, the timing of it made me think it might have been. Anyway, whoever this person might be, I don't like to mention this person's name because, you know, Attention is currency on the internet. Um, I'd rather let this person be forgotten 
but I, I mention it here, I think probably in more detail than I ever have publicly, just because, um, where do you go, right? I went to the UCLA police and I reported this stuff, and they were like, <laughs> wait, wait until you have an assault charge, um, which, you know, threatening wasn't. Um, I, I tried to get this person to actually hit me, because I was like, give me an assault and battery charge. I can go to the police with. You know, the department chair wouldn't help me because the uh, tenured professors in the department relied on each other. In a small department, each one needed the other to uh, to write his, his file for promotion to the next step up. Um, so even though they hated each other, even though they even had physical conflicts, strangling and stuff. Uh, this stuff is surprisingly ripe. I mean, academics, I find, very often get very concerned about the plight of um, of the less fortunate and are weirdly blind to the way that the system in which they operate victimizes and preys on the less fortunate. Um, or maybe they just choose to maybe they say, well, there's no way to fix the university, so we'll fix something else. I don't know. Um, it was never as bad anywhere else, and I did have friends uh, and people who were helpful at, at UCLA. But uh, that was a lot of what drove me to drinking real bad. Uh, I had a horrible whiskey habit from, uh, uh, well, I mean, it, it, there was a lead up to it, but it was really bad from early 2012 till uh, I had my last drink to this date, October 9th, 2015. Uh, I come by it honestly, uh, a lot of alcoholism in my family, but it was a lot of that, that pressure and stress and, and, and harassment that drove it. Um, when this individual conceived a kind of uh, desire for vengeance against me, this individual returned, uh, reclaimed the job, and very suddenly at the end of school year 2013-14, I didn't have a job anymore. So I went applying to just anything. And here's where I learned another really big lesson in uh, looking for jobs in this kinds of fields. My PhD says Scandinavian studies. To most people, it's like, what does that mean? What can you do? You know, what the hell? It's not, it's nothing from Sweden at this gas station, buddy. You know, like well, people don't want to hire you because they see you as this weird, just this, as just this weirdo, right? Uh, you probably have precious interests, precious ambitions. You know, you're going to quit as soon as you get hired somewhere uh, that, that, that's softer on you or something. You know, people get people can be pretty mean about this stuff. And that's even true of applying for academic jobs. I applied for literally hundreds. I used to remember the specific number. I think I've exaggerated over the years, but it was literally hundreds of jobs just at community colleges and stuff. You know, I've been teaching effectively English classes at UCLA because that was part of what the Scandinavian department did was um, basically teach English composition but like about Scandinavian literature or something. These are huge classes. They were just money makers for the department. But I basically taught English and I could not get hired at a community college teaching English because again, PhD says Scandinavian studies. And a lot of those colleges and universities have a rule that says your terminal degree has to be the same as the department of which you're teaching. So unable to get any kind of academic position, I applied for jobs uh, closer to my homeland, right? I was looking in Colorado and the Mountain States, and I wound up working at a uh, small museum in Riverton, Wyoming for a year. Um, that job actually paid better, not just in proportionate terms, because Riverton is the cheapest city to live in, but in absolute terms, better than any academic job I ever had. And I was a glorified, actually not even really glorified, I was a clerk slash janitor slash gopher. So that's that was something to chew on. I uh, taught at Berkeley for two years. I have to, uh, I have to say that the, uh, the chair of that department at the time, Mark Sandberg, um, uh, really tried hard to do, do well by me. Um, you know, this is not, this, this video has nothing to do with slandering anybody, and I, I, but I do want to name some, some people who are very good to me over the years. Um, taught there for two years, and then finally, by coincidence in 2017, I got hired teaching um, back in my home state of Colorado uh, and I taught at the University of Colorado for three years. Um, 
plenty of fine people at the University of Colorado. Uh, the way that the department is set up, not very conducive to long-term career goals, as I stated. Um, I hope that it's understood that I want to discourage you from thinking that you starting off on a path like this would go better than how it went for me. I think that it went better for me than it goes for most people. Most people who I know who have a PhD in something like Scandinavian studies wind up maybe teaching English somewhere. And when I say teaching English, I mean not English composition, I mean teaching English as a foreign language somewhere, right? They wind up going perhaps to Taiwan or Korea or something like that. It's gonna be fine jobs, it's gonna be rewarding jobs. It's not what those people started out wanting to do. A lot of these people find themselves very socially isolated. I know that I've often felt that way myself. Now, I'm something of an introvert, not like most people, not, you know, all the way to one end of that spectrum or the other, but mostly an introvert. And um, so I can get by without a ton of, of social stuff, especially party kind of stuff. But you do find yourself unable to relate to a lot of the people around you, except the academics. And while there are many fine academics, if you have a personality type that's a little bit different in some ways from the average academic, uh, you can find it very difficult to relate even to those other academics. Um, I find that there's something about what attracts people to academic pursuits that also attracts people who are really extreme. I'm not just talking about politically, although, I mean, that is part of it. You meet, you know, the, 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 the stereotype is the left-wing extremist in academia. In fact, the most extreme right-wing people I've ever known have been academics, too. Um... So it just seems to be kind of an, an extreme personality thing. And I'm not an extreme personality um, in politics or anything else. Um, I am a very moderate person by nature. I distrust extremes. I distrust um, really categorical absolutes about most things. And I'm very willing to talk to people who disagree with me and to say, hey, you know, I don't have everything figured out. I don't think this person does either. Who cares if we disagree about how we interpret something? You know, neither one of us wants to hurt the other, and that's and that's all I ask for. Um, but for some reason, and I don't know exactly what it is, academia does tend to attract some of those extreme types. Um, again, like I said, Old Norse is not going to rest its head on your chest as it drifts to sleep. And as one gets older than the 17 or 18-year-old idealistic high school student who thinks, oh, I'm going to make a career out of, out of learning and teaching this obscure subject, you start realizing that those goals are pretty far away, right? Uh, I was married at the time that I was hired at UCLA. Um, we, um, I want to tread carefully here. I, uh, uh, I, we had a lot of dreams at the time. We had married quite young um, and, and quite poor in a way. Um, and all of those things wound up being on hold, not just because of the moving and the low pay and, um, you know, my response, uh, drinking to, to the stress. Um, there was just never a way to start building anything. And so as those dreams got further away, we got more distant and, um, there were a lot of junctures where I could have made choices that were would have been better uh, for that relationship uh, and I I don't think that my career choices were conducive to that relationship or any other right and it's difficult to figure out how to turn reading all of them all into you know I'm gonna buy you a house it's like that Everclear song right and, uh, and we're gonna live together and be, be happily ever after. Um, I have maybe a better idea about how to do that kind of thing now than I used to, but I still don't know for a fact that YouTube and books and consulting and all the other weird mixes of things that I do are gonna add up to enough to do that one day. Um, yes, you can always say, by the way, philosophers out there, be happy with less. Fine. Fine. But, before you say be happy with less, say, here's what really makes me happy. 
and make that decision as an adult. <laughs> right? My career decision was pretty much made for me at about 17 when uh, my grandfather gave me the best career advice that I ever got that I obeyed in the wrong way. He said, talk to people who have the career that you want to have or the job that you want to have or pursue the path you want to pursue. I did that. But I talked to tenured professors in subjects like linguistics. I didn't know that I wouldn't wind up being a tenured professor and that most people don't who pursue this sort of thing. If I had talked to the adjuncts, I would have heard um, very different stories. Now, what else could I have done? I don't know. There's no way for me to prescribe my own past. I, I, I really try hard not to dwell on regrets, uh, particularly hard this year. Um, and I obviously can't advise you. I know that I talked to a career counselor in 2019 when I was thinking about leaving the University of Colorado to pursue the self-employment track. And um, I found uh, that was very, very helpful. Um, kind of contextualizing my own talents and abilities. Unfortunately, not necessarily, so I have a weird combination of not particularly remunerative talents and abilities, but high ambition, right? Like I think there was some personality test we did it was really weird. It was a very rare correlation of a very high um, ambition quotient or something with very high, um, like basically the abilities to make you a librarian, <laughs> right? Nothing wrong with being a librarian, but it's not something you associate with someone who's like, um, you know, Rockefeller ambitious or something, which apparently I scored about that high on that, that sort of thing. Um, I think that maybe if I had talked to a career counselor much earlier, I could have perhaps come up with a career path that, that I would have enjoyed a little bit more that might have used my um, desire. And um, apparently, I mean, you be the judge, 264,000 people out there of um, uh, talent for teaching. Maybe there's something else I could have done, something that would have put me in a better position to make a living, but maintain my intellectual curiosity in Old Norse and related subjects, old languages. Um, and just not try to pay my bills with it. Now I'm 37, staring down the barrel of 38. That may not sound old, but, uh, you know, I lost my best friend when we were 16, and I've never been able to forget the lesson of that, which is that you just don't know when your last moment is. And I want it, I want that last moment to be one when I woke up um, knowing pretty well where I was going to make my living a year later should I have lived. I want it to be a, a day I woke up with the woman I love. I want it to be a day I woke up, you know, maybe not necessarily on some grand palatial estate. That's not what I'm saying, but, you know, in a, in a home, right? I'll add in Colorado because that is a pretty big deal to me. <sighs> I hope this video has not been totally discouraging. A lot of this stuff I have said to people one-on-one -on -one over the years, especially in person, and I've been a reluctant to talk about here because I thought it might be hard to do and sound not too bitter. And I really don't want to come across as super bitter. I'm trying to get you all a little bit more of the sunset colors back here. Sunset's actually uh, that way, but it casts a nice light back over here. Um, I just want you to understand what the frustrations of one academic's life um, have been um, in a little bit more detail and, and confessional style maybe than I've previously talked about them because I do care about people who have an intellectual curiosity in subjects like mine. I think uh, whatever our other personality differences, there's something that binds us. And I feel like as someone who has walked a long way um, down the path that a lot of people are contemplating and has been hurt walking it, that I have a responsibility to say, you can get really hurt you know, alcoholism and divorce 
and um, you know anxieties about um, complicated long distance relationships and moving all the time, which sucks by the way, and you know making very little money. All of these things are very attendant upon that alcohol, that <laughs> upset that, that alcoholic lifestyle. I mean, it's almost a synonym, synonym right? That academic lifestyle. Um, I'm sober now, self-employed for however long that lasts, um, and I'm not going to be like one of your professors and tell you there's lots of opportunities out there in academia. There's not not in this kind of field, but your, your intellect is valuable, your curiosity is valuable, and if you can find your way to making money <laughs> um, with some skill that people will pay you for, um, I hope it's something that makes you happy and I think that your career does not have to be the thing that makes you happy. Um, I think your career can be what you do to pay the bills for the things that make you happy. And I'm trying to get there without selling out and, and using my old Norse skills, bizarrely enough. Um, but I can picture a future in which I would give up on that and try to make a living doing something entirely different if I had a good reason to think that I could. Um, without going back to school for 10 years to be a lawyer or a doctor or something. Um, boy, that would feel, uh, that would be, that would be difficult and costly. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to say here. It's a sort of gentle way of parting and I can't remember what it was. Uh, this has already been so rambling. I'm not sure. At any rate, I guess I'm tired of rambling. I hope this was useful to someone out there. I hope it's not too discouraging. But in fact, I want to be encouraging. Live your life. Live a good life. You're an intellectual and a curious person who deserves to. And the university system is not going to treat you the way that you want to be treated. Not if you're not luckier than 1,000 people I've known in this system. So take care of yourselves, find what you love, grasp it, hold on to it, pursue it, do everything you can to hold it, while being true to your values, of course. And I really do mean that. It's not just a aside. Um, it does matter, right? I mean, I guess I could try to sell out and be a, uh, I don't know. I don't even know if I could successfully do it because I, I don't think I'm a very charismatic liar. Um, you know, sell rune healing crystals or something. Uh, I, I, I can't believe that I could actually pull that off. And uh, it'd be very difficult for me to make a living off the seat. Anyway, all right. Ramble over, wind on. You're valuable. Value yourself and your time. And uh, who and what you love. Go out, grasp them with both hands. Never let go. Beautiful Colorado, all the best.